still right. strong, right? Oh, it, it is. Um, David, the, yes, the economy went 4.2% in the second quarter, 3.4% in the third quarter. Looks like about 2% real growth in the, in the fourth quarter. But the full year is still going to be 3%. And, and these quarterly numbers are volatile. Back, uh, back in 2015, we went from two to one to half a percent growth, and that was not a signal of recession. And, and so I think everybody's overreacting to these slower growth numbers. The jobs market is still very, very strong. Uh, the housing market has actually started to pop back up. Uh, durable goods orders, the uh, Institute for Supply Management that measures uh, activity in factories and in services. Both of those are going to be record highs for 2018. There is no evidence that this is going to fall into a recession, and that's what it would take to make this a real, true bear market. Right but now, Brian, it's a what then? It's not what, a bear market. What then are the markets forecasting? Because they are a great forecaster. Everybody agrees with that. You do as well. Uh, last week it was an awful week. I mean, the Nasdaq was down 8.4 percent. The Dow right. was down almost 7 percent. I mean, what what is it forecasting, if not economic yeah. recession? Yeah, and, and David, I'm not, I, I won't disagree with you that I agree with you that markets are good forecasters. The question is, do you want to look back over six months, a year, two years, three years? Because if you look back over any of those periods, the markets are forecasting great things ahead. It's just recently uh, that the market has turned down. And it did this in 2010. Uh, it did this in late 2015, early 2016. Both of those times, if you would have said the market's forecasting a, a problems with the economy, you would have been wrong. And I, and I think this time you are as well. This is just a correction. And people always look for reasons for the correction. Um, and, and so there's lots of them, right? Government shutdown, tariffs, the Fed. Um, but, but I think people are, are overreacting. I call it economic hypochondria uh, <laughs> that, that is causing this. It's, uh, everybody thinks 2008 is going to come back. And I think the biggest mistake people are making is they think that it, it's all the Fed's doing. That's the only reason the market is up. That's the only reason the economy has grown. And now that the Fed has started to raise rates, and by the way, they're still really low, and there's still 1.6 trillion in excess reserves in the mm -hmm. banking system. By the way, the, uh, uh, Secretary Mnuchin uh, calling those banks, yeah. I, I love that because you do because because yeah, I I do because a lot of people. By the way, just is, so just so folks out there know what we're talking about, the uh, Steve Mnuchin, the Secretary of the Treasury, called a bunch of bank CEOs assuring them that things are okay, but some people took it as, gee, why is he uh, calling to say there's no fire if there's no fire? You know what I mean? That's it. A right. lot of people got right. kind of panicky uh, as a result of these phone calls, but you, you were, have just the opposite feeling. Yeah, I, well, I think the conversation went both ways. I think he, he said, from, from my point of view, things look okay. But, hey, what does it look like from your, your point of view? And what they all said is we have lots of liquidity. We have extra capital. We're at record earnings. This is not 2008. If you go back uh, to 06, 07, 08, bank, banks were levered up like crazy. Today, they're not. They have extra capital. There, is one, there are 1.6 trillion in excess reserves. So all that quantitative easing, it hasn't been taken away. It's still sitting out there. There's lots and lots of liquidity in this system. And so for people to expect another 2008, it doesn't make any sense. Plus, on top of that, we've changed mark-to-market -market accounting, which is what, which is what took that, the, the problems in our financial system back in 07 and 08 and turned them into an inferno. But, Brian, you don't That's think not that, going to happen again. You don't think that the trade concerns, and particularly what's happening not, not only with China, but what's happening with Europe right. uh, after Brexit, et cetera, and they're still in the middle of that mess, that's not right. affecting the U.S. I, I can understand that the U.S. economy is strong. We see all the indicators uh, that right. clearly show it is. But eventually, we're not an island. Eventually, the world closes in on us, no? Yeah, well, it, it does in a way. Remember, Japan was the second largest economy in the world in 1989. It collapsed. 
And, and yet the U.S. had, uh, uh, the 90s were, were an awesome period for the United States. They sure were. And so, you, you know, Europe has, has slowed from 2% growth to 1% growth, but the U.S. has picked up from 2% growth to 3% growth. So you could argue that we're winning. And then just real quick on the tariffs, you know, everywhere I look, Mexico has reduced their tariffs. Canada has reduced tariffs on dairy. Uh, the EU is reducing tariffs on industrial goods and automobiles. China has cut tariffs on 1,500 goods, and har none of this is reported. Right. Um, and and what, so what's happening is, is that the pressure from President Trump is actually resulting in lower tariffs around the world, which is like a tax cut for all consumers. And so, so I actually look at, at I, look, I, I don't like tariffs. I don't like trade wars. They scare the heck out of me. Um, however, if, if the, the pressure that the president is putting on these other, other countries is working right now. They are reducing yeah. tariffs, and, that, and that's going to be good news in the long and run. And by the way, we are going to be reporting on these new developments in China because there are some big changes in their reductions yes. of tariffs and a whole range of goods we'll be talking about later. Yeah. Meanwhile, you got the price of oil out there. It continues to come down. The national Absolutely. average for regular gasoline is 2 bucks 32 cents a gallon. Uh, Brian, how much lower do you think it can go? Well, I, I think we're about where oil should be priced. It should be somewhere between 55 and 65. That's according to all of our work. That we, and we go back hundreds of years in looking at commodity prices and relationships between them. And so, you know, it'd be really nice if they go lower, but this is about right um, today. And, I, and, you know, and oil is a volatile commodity, so it could go lower, it could go a little bit higher. But, but I, I would argue that consumers ought to expect two to two dollar and fifty cent gasoline as far as the eye can wow. see. And it's frack, it's fracking that's doing yeah, this. Absolutely. You know, th this brings up a great point, David. You know, everybody keeps crediting the Fed with all our growth. But what about the, the people that are fracking wells, building yeah. the cloud, writing no, apps? It's, it's Amer I mean, Americans are responsible for the growth. No institution, right. no government or exactly. semi-government institution is responsible for the economy growing. It's Americans, exactly. given the freedom, given the liberation from regulations and tax right. burdens that are responsible for this growth. Right. Brian, next time you come in, it may be too late, but 